The international financier and philanthropist George Soros has a long-standing interest in the politics and future of Eastern Europe. He is the founder and funder of the Open Society Foundation. In 1992, George Soros gave $50 million to assist the victims of the Bosnian War. It is the largest private donation ever made there. He now joins us to talk about the Bosnian Peace Agreement. I'm pleased to have him back on this program. Welcome back. It's nice to be Great back. Great to see you. Uh, tell me, have you talked to anybody about this? I mean, what, what do you hear? What are people involved saying? Well, I had, uh, I had uh, dinner with uh, Silajic the day before yeah. yesterday. And then, of course, I talked with some of the negotiators, uh, the American negotiators. So I got a pretty good picture of uh, what happened. And I also looked at the treaty and so on. What did Silajic say? Uh, he was very much in uh, in favor. He felt that, it, first of all, that it was necessary to have peace now, that if one f fought on, conditions would deteriorate, it would be more difficult rather than less difficult. Uh, and he also felt that uh, this treaty was of the range of possibilities about as good as you could get. Does he, in the end, though, and I ask Richard Holbrook this, and I also asked uh, Foreign Minister Sakharovic the same question. Does he see it in the end as a partition? For all the talk and all the niceties and all the language, in the end, we're talking about our partition. This is, this is the ultimate question. You know, is this Bosnia that is being created just a fig leaf yeah. to co cover an effective partition? We can partition. talk the language of unitary state, but in the end, we know that it's being divided. That's right. Or will there be a Bosnia? And this, this was the main question in my mind, actually, when I sat down to dinner with him. Uh, and by the time we finished reviewing the situation, I came away much more hopeful that there could be a Bosnia. First of all, he himself is very much um, the man standing for the principle of civic uh, citizenship rather than ethnic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the treaty, if it's properly implemented, would actually lead uh, to, to that concept uh, mm -hmm. prevailing. And that is worth uh, 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 fighting for. So I came away, and I'm now a very strong supporter of this settlement. What's going to happen to Sarajevo? Well, that is uh, one of the really pleasant surprises, that Sar Sarajevo has been preserved uh, as an entity, the, the Serb suburbs become part of Sarajevo. Now, that's actually going to be one of the first challenges to uh, whether the, the Serbs actually stay there uh, or whether they just move, move the way the uh, Kraina Serbs did. If they stay, then Sarajevo will be reestablished as a um, uh, multi ethnic city. Notwithstanding the fact that it was a multi ethnic city. Uh, so much killing has taken place uh, that there are many people saying, if I was Serb, Serbian, mm -hmm. if I was a Bosnian Serb, I wouldn't stay there. I wouldn't mm -hmm. get out out of fear of my life. Well, that, that is uh, one of the dangers, that all the Serbs leave uh, uh, that suburb, and I think it's up to the Bosnian government to, to reassure them right at the beginning. And to protect they, them. And to protect them, yes. It will be one of the first challenges. Uh, that uh, the Bosnian government is going to face. When the president asked for support on the basis of this agreement and to send 20,000 American Oops. military forces there, are you enthusiastically behind that call? Very much so. I, I think that we are, we have a grave responsibility for what happened there. I've been very critical of the administration's policies there. Uh, and now that we have a chance to build peace or to maintain peace, we must make that move because we are involved. You know, we, we are part of the uh, embargo on, uh, on armaments. Uh, so we are one way or another party to this horrible uh, uh, slaughter. And so now here's our chance to do something to maintain peace and we mustn't fail. Do you think the American public has the will to withstand, for the lack of a better expression, body bags coming home? I very much hope so. I understand that uh, public opinion is divided uh, pretty evenly, and there's very strong opposition in Congress, particularly from the newcoming 
Uh, so the freshmen have seemed uh, to be against uh, it. I mean, uh, very much so. And the, and and it is actually that part uh, is an isolationist kind of uh, reaction. But the responsible leaders of the uh, Republican Party, I understand Dole came out in favor of it today. I, he did. I, I didn't see that because yes. it was otherwise. Yes. He actually said he's going to support the president. Yes. There, there was yes. a very tough column by Bill Sapphire in the New York Times this morning. He said he yes. had three options. and I mean, he either could support the president or else he could yes. oppose it. Or he so could. I think he has taken a statesmanlike position. Uh, I'm sure, sure that Phil Graham is going to attack him and going to campaign on that. Because so they think there's some sentiment in the primary uh, states right. against this treaty, and it may be right. the only place they have to chip away a dole. That's right. That's right. So it, it is. A, it is unfortunately caught up in the uh, domestic uh, policy because the budget debate also exacerbates the, the uh, sentiment. But uh, nevertheless, I hope, really sincerely hope, that uh, Congress will support it. Because it's very important. What do you worry about, though? I mean, there are a lot of people say, I don't know, and the president has not convinced me he has an exit strategy. All he has is a date. Right. That's not a strategy. Well, the date is very important because that's the, pres uh, that's the presidential election date, more or less. So I think that's, that's the greatest assurance that he'll do everything to make sure that the troops are home before the elections. Uh, I think that's the exit strategy. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's a political thing. I mean, that's yes. not, that does not say we, uh, our strategy is to do this. Basically, mm. you're just saying we're going to get out because we, got, we can't risk being there Right. With an upcoming presidential election, I mean, right. that doesn't seem to me to be good diplomacy, right? Good policy, right? Only right. good Let, politics, okay. and that's Let, that's, that's, that's true. the problem. But, okay, but basically, what can those troops do? Basically, they can only keep the factions apart. They can't bring them together. It's not their mission. And it's, it's, it's very clear that they are not supposed to do yeah, that. This is not okay. nation building. This is se. not nation right. building. Uh, the nation building has to take place. And that is where the emphasis should be. And that is where, you know, reconstruction, uh, the training of, uh, of the police, the uh, war crimes tribunal, the elections, those are the important events that are going to determine whether this is a success or whether, in fact, it will be a partition. I think I understand you to believe that what we ought to have here is rather than the building up of the Bosnian military capability, there ought to be a build, build down, down of the that's Serbian, a, that's the right. Bosnian Serbs. Which will, which will in, inevitably, I think, o occur. Why would I, it occur? Uh, look, they are, they are exhausted. There are 600,000 uh, uh, Serbs left in the Serbian part of Bosnia. There used to be one and a half million uh, Serbs mm -hmm. in Bosnia. Uh, the 600,000 in, in, in the Serb part, 150,000 in the Bosnian part, and 750,000 have left. Now, if some of those people come back, the mixture changes. Uh, the, the, the main city, Banja Luka, is actually uh, the one city in, in uh, Bosnia which is not destroyed. It's actually untouched, right. except for some mosques, 16 mosques that have been blown up. And actually there, the Muslims were protected by the, by the local population. They were only expelled in the, uh, the very end. And even today, there are about 6,000 Bosnians uh, living in Banja Luka. So I think that, that uh, it will not be impossible to rebuild a, 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 a multi-ethnic society. It, it's going to be difficult, but not impossible. And when you particularly, I uh, put very much emphasis on the role of the War Crimes Tribunal. I think it's very, very important that it should be Do you expect effective. to see Karadzic and Melodic on trial? Yes. You do? Yes, I do. Oh. And in fact, it's very difficult to see how they will not be on trial. Who's going to arrest them where? And, um, the, we've been very firm on the principles that the War Crimes Tribunal's jurisdiction has to be respected. So, uh, actually, the, the the treaty calls gives the power to the um, to the um, commander and the main civilian uh, who is Im implementation officer to reimpose uh, the embargo on Yugoslavia 
if they found if they are found to be not in compliance with the so with the PC Malosevic is going to make sure that these two guys are going are, are arrested and well I don't from? look I think that it's going to be very tough because uh, if they are uh, arrested and if they sing then Milosevic himself may find himself uh, himself before the tribunal so what would you do uh, then if you were Milosevic I I'm I think uh, I'm, I'm actually amazed that uh, that um, the, you know he's accepted all these terms uh, but it will be very difficult to resist yeah. you see also the uh, the uh, the uh, reconstruction effort will be conditional the humanitarian aid will be unconditional but the reconstruction will be conditional so that the Serbian part of Bosnia will also have to accept the presence of the uh, war crimes uh, investigators and I think this is tremendously important both for for re-establishing political uh, stability in, in in Bosnia and for the future I mean this will be you know law is built by precedent mm -hmm. and this is going to be a very important precedent so I think uh, one should not underestimate. People uh, think, well, that's just uh, a lot of words. I think this time it's really going to happen. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly do whatever <laughs> I can to make sure that it does. Well, what does that mean? Well, I think, we'll, we'll, I think we all have to apply pressure. I think that the, the mechanism is there to make it work. It's really a question of the will of the international community. You see, uh, the, uh, because if uh, if we just sort of uh, let let it go then it will slide so it really is public opinion that mm -hmm. will uh, yeah. dictate on you this point what is amazing about this and i've done as many programs as anybody i think mm -hmm. in broadcast journalism on the subject of yes. bosnia yes it amazes me how much has been now placed on this accord mm -hmm. it, the savior of nato Mm -hmm. The savior of America's reputation yes. in the world. Yes. You know, the sa and, and this it go you go down the list yes. of one yes. item after another. Yes. We've invested mm -hmm. an enormous amount. Yes. And it, somehow coming to some kind of acceptable end mm -hmm. to this conflict. Right. Because the the heinous nature of the atrocities yes. committed see, has been so. Yeah, but unfortunately, we have not been moved by the heinous nature. Of course, that's right. uh, we were moved. By, and this is where our national interest has been uh, brought into question. Uh, NATO, the 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 um, uh, credibility of NATO was at stake. So it was NATO, and the credibility of our president yes. was also at stake. So those two things are are finally the the elements that have mm -hmm. moved us to change our attack. Last time you were here, you said to me that you had supported President Clinton in 1992. Mm -hmm. You were mm -hmm. unlikely. To support him in '96, yes. and will probably support Dole if I heard you. Well, I have just written him a letter to say that, uh, in view of uh, the, the latest developments, uh, I will be, I will support him in '96. So you're back supporting Clinton I in '96? Yes, based on what, but the fact that finally we begin to have some kind of a foreign policy. I was so, very critical of Clinton for not having a, a coherent policy. So, but what about Dole, who all along has advocated, you know, a lift the embargo and strike all yeah. along? So. Yeah, well, you see, I think that that uh, Dole is also acting responsibly, as, <laughs> having endorsed uh, the, uh, the the. But he played a very strange game, actually, uh, because he was for lifting the embargo, but he was very much against the use of troops. Yes, uh, and it was a kind of a. Uh, somewhat yeah. ambivalent. I, I, I agree with you, but at the yeah. same time, what's interesting is the use of troops sort of got accepted in the beginning because they, we talked about using them to pull out. The yes. president's yeah. word will use American troops to pull out right. uh, to help the NATO troops withdraw, yes. perhaps to make available the opportunity to use airstrikes. Mm -hmm. But that whole notion became moved over and sat in, and, and they those same troops and the idea of using American troops mm. all of a sudden was to play a different role yeah. which well, was to, it, not to help somebody evacuate but to be a, in a peacekeeping function. Right. Well you see uh, that was the original offer actually. Right. It, 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 was the, it was originally a peacekeeping right. offer then it changed to a NATO withdrawal offer. Mission, right. And then when, those horror, uh, when the, NATO, the uh, UN troops were mistreated and Chirac, President Chirac took a yeah. firm stand, right. that's when we 
changed our deck. It's good to have you here. There are many things we talk about. I hope you have come back soon. I mean, I am struck by this notion as I leave you. It is Milosevic evidently acted because uh, the embargo and sanctions against Serbia right. were having an impact. That is Which that's correct. makes me wonder how much economic force in a positive way on part of the private sector, people like you, yes. could be brought to bear on Bosnia as a positive instinct. It is the most important, but it's the most important thing now. And I think there is a package now about four, five billion dollars. Yeah. And it, it, it properly implemented, it will really make a difference. Because the, they, leaders like that like nothing better than staying in power. Yeah. And if yeah. somehow they can deliver some economic change that benefits uh, right. their constituents. Well, I mean, Milosevic has really changed the attack. He, he was the one who really started it all. He unleashed this, uh, this ethnic uh, right. thing. Yeah. In, in and the now interest of a greater Serbia. Right. And now he is the great uh, leader for, <laughs> for peace. Whether he can get away with it is another story. All right. Great to see you, George. Okay. George Soros. When we come back, Susanna Moore is here. Her book is In the Cut. We'll talk about this controversial novel and this author who did a lot of interesting research before writing it. Back in a moment, Susanna Moore.